This is Twit. I think the big one you and I have been talking about is the delay of Artemis, and we'll be yes. having Pam Melroy on soon, Deputy Administrator of NASA, to talk about that. It was supposed to be here this week, but they got weathered out in Washington, so here we are, your consolation prize. But this is, in a sense, a good thing because we could talk about this a little in advance. So, yeah. You know, it's a little frustrating. I just want to say up front, I was I was online commenting somebody the other day. They were saying, oh, when's it, when's it going to fly and why is it taking so long? And if you were around during the space race years, which I was as a young lad, well, not, not that young, but <laughs> young enough, um, y you were used to delays. The, and there were a lot of them. There were the constant delays, largely with the lunar module, but, but with also the Apollo capsule after the Apollo 1 fire and so forth. This is just part of it. The difference is, I mean, there's a number of differences. The big difference experientially is that these delays we're seeing now are a lot longer on the matter of years instead of months. But let's all bear in mind before we launch into this that we're still not sure what the exact margins are. At one point, I could have said Artemis is only going to cost 25% of what Apollo costs. But <laughs> You know, as even adjusted, it's it's narrowing down a bit, and I I think it's going to be closer to half or perhaps more. But it appears to be working slowly. So uh, at the core of this this long diatribe is the fact that NASA uh, in the last two weeks has announced that Artemis two is delayed to at least December twenty twenty five, and Artemis three, the first lunar landing. Uh, to 2026, I think we're all still a little queasy with that date, <laughs> given what's going on with SpaceX's uh, lunar lander version of the uh, Starship. And I just want to add, before I turn it over to you, Doctor, that uh, Representative Frank Lucas, a Republican from the state of Oklahoma, uh, recently complained, we're not the only ones going to the moon. <laughs> oh, no, he didn't. Wink, wink, snarl, snarl. Um, of course, implicating China. But you know, we want to make sure these guys get back. So we have heat shield issues to worry about. We have battery problems. Uh, apparently, there's some issues with the ventilation and temperature controls, although I'm not sure that would actually hold them back unless they're pretty severe. And, of course, the biggies, the uh, extravehicular activity moon suits that we haven't built since the 70s. And that great big lander that we need yeah <laughs> what's, it's, what's interesting the lander? The, it's, inter it's interesting that you mentioned the, the moon suits because axiom space is actually building those suits right now um and uh and they actually touched a little bit on that uh in their during their ax3 launch saying that they're you know they're making progress but they're not done yet you know they're not they're not finished um but yeah it's weird that we're starting kind of our our look ahead belatedly for for the year of for something that's not happening this year because we were really looking forward uh, to it. You know, the original plan, well, the original plan was for Artemis two to launch last year, you know, and yeah, actually yeah. The, uh, maybe even a year or, or so earlier. And it's, it just keeps you know getting pushed to the right. And before this recent change, it was kind of in the November, December period for 2024. And, um, and so, you know, all of those issues, the heat shield issues, the, the Eclis, uh, stuff, you know, the, the Artemis one did not have that life support system fully, you know, tested out, right. uh, on it because they were trying to just do the, um, the, the, the basic, the basic flight, uh, around the moon uh, and they have to get all of that stuff done. And that's something you do not want going wrong on your very first, uh, crude flight on the, on the, on the new ship. And, uh, and so they do have to kind of close all those boxes and it, it is frustrating to see it but it's it's i think a little bit easier to have the delay this far up front right than to have nasa be playing you know hunky dory for the entire year then, and oops. then and then kind of pull that rug out later on um and of course they wouldn't be able to do that because there's like milestones that you have to you know have uh well, in hand and, so, and excuse me but just in terms of timeline i think it's important to remember that that uh hope i get these dates right that we were originally we being nasa and and the planners were originally aiming for later launch dates for all this mm -hmm. stuff it was the trump administration that said no that's no, right that's i right. want it by this date 2028 back by a couple of years yeah. 20 2028 was kind of the uh the target uh, uh 2026 to 2028 for for artemis flights to the moon and of course it wasn't artemis then it was you know just the the the, the moon plan and uh 
and they, when, when the when the Trump administration accelerated that plan, that's when they pushed it up to uh, 2024. Then we saw the slip uh, to 2025, and then now 2026 for the Artemis three mission. Now, what NASA did say, uh, and we kind of touched on this in our last episode too about um, Artemis plans for the moon, is that that fourth mission, which is the one that would start kind of building out that architecture uh, for the gateway bases and and, and beyond, uh, still is on track for uh, 2028. So NASA is kind of targeting these annual flights in the fall, like late summer, fall, September 2025 for Artemis 2, uh, September 2026 for Artemis 3, and then September 2028. Now that's a two-year uh, jump for Artemis 4. And uh, and then the missions would be annual, annual, pardon me, uh, after that. Um, and, you know, budget-wise, you were talking about that. These are supposed to cost, you know, on comparative levels, uh, to to the space shuttle program, you know those those flights of a few billion dollars uh, a, a trip, if you will, uh, going forward. And NASA has plans to fund or at least to order enough enough SLS boosters, you know, through Artemis Ten at this point right now is what they what they were looking at. In fact, the second booster core is uh, under kind of final construction in in Michoud, uh, as we speak we've seen some of the photos of, of it already uh so this does seem a lot more feasible and of course it's a new administration now which is probably a little bit more amenable to delays of this sort um but hopefully this will allow the commercial partners to kind of get to catch up uh, at this point which is weird that we're saying that <laughs> that they have to catch up um uh with 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 the work that nasa is working on so that they can have all of these things but it's you don't want to have the the way to get there and then nothing nothing that you need to uh to arrive but yeah. the big tent for any of these landings that you're talking about is is the 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 human landing system the 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 spacex starship at least at this point because they have to fly not one but at least two flights to support uh an artemis 3 landing one is an uncrewed moon landing with a starship and then then of course the crewed landing with with the starship uh, right. uh as well each of those starship and- flights Needs 10 flights to refuel the thing. Well, a minimum of 10. <laughs> a minimum, yeah. And let us point out, we, we we both suffered through a press conference last week where they talked about this. And uh, to his credit, uh, Mr. Bill Nelson said, uh, sorry, so let me back up. So somebody asked the SpaceX rep, I don't remember her name, uh, sounded like a nice enough lady as often happens with, with SpaceX, very young, maybe new to that job, I don't know. And so they asked, so, hey, who was it? What, do you remember which journalist it was? Was it Irene? I think it was Irene, right? I think it was Irene, yeah. Irene yeah, Klotz, right, uh, Klotz, Aviation Week, I believe. Said, uh, hey, thanks for taking my question. How many flights is it going to take to refuel this lunar lander to make it out to the moon and down and back? And there was, uh, on SpaceX's side, a little bit of shuffling and muffling. And, well, you know, it's a, a few. And we're, I'm, I'm not, blah, blah, blah. And finally, <laughs> Bill Nelson, in a very uncharacteristic moment, said, I believe the question was exactly how many flights is it going to take to refuel this thing? Well, we think about 10, but <laughs> they're not they're not nailed that number. I've heard as much as 16. Yeah, and it's it's, it's it's gone. I mean, it's gone back and forth. I heard eighteen five, <laughs> five gallon pail at a time. You know, I know it's big. I know it's new. I know this is different. But we've only had two test flights of this thing, both of which ended in less than optimum circumstances. And you know, every time you see images of Boca Chica, there's all these starships lined up like soldiers waiting to take their turn at the charge. And I know that there are problems with Fish and Wildlife and FAA, and they got a lot of boxes to check. But man, they better they better hurry up. Yeah, uh, and and it, it was interesting because that's a number that that we've wanted to know for a while, and uh, and both NASA's own representative that was initially answered, asked the question, um, and SpaceX did kind of hem and haw, and, yeah. and I, I think that Bill Nelson wanted to know as well. <laughs> that's, why, that's why we yeah. heard that. Um, okay, I've got this on my scratch pad here. Well, and it's like asking about the life support system in Starship. Hey, mm-hmm. how's that coming? Well, we 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 have one in Crew Dragon. Yeah. Yeah, and what are you going to put 10 of those in starship what are you going to do that's exactly what elon Musk told me in 2019 that's exactly what he said we've got it we've got it we've got it pegged out on um on a uh, uh on dragon so i think it'll be fine now maybe it will be because i think that the interior of starship is going to be very different than what the the um uh the artist 
you know, renderings had been where we see like a ballerina well, floating, you know, and whatnot. Yeah. I don't know and, if they're going to still cram a hundred people in there. Well, let's remember that, the, that, <laughs> that a lot of those renderings came from third parties. SpaceX, SpaceX has delivered precious few things that would show us other than in whimsical terms, how that thing would be configured at all. And it would make a lot of sense, I think, to have, you know, I mean, how, how many people are heading down the lunar surface? Three or four? Uh, well, they'll have two people for the, the initial ones, right? Uh, and then okay. the four per, the four person mission. It could be all four of them. You know, we don't know. We don't know. Uh, but the the point is, you know, if you take the Orion capsule and put it up against the very top of Starship, <laughs> you don't need much pressurized volume for that. Yeah, land. exactly. And it depends on how much cargo you want to bring too. Now they will have this giant elevator. In fact, the astronauts are testing that now. Um, uh, the, the 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 towering elevator that's going to pop out the the mm. crew. The, the yeah. crew compartment and then uh, lower the astronauts all the way down which excuse know. me but if i had seen that in one of those awful japanese sci-fi movies from my childhood they had a couple of those movies that had a big rocket with a little elevator and a, a couple of you know three inch high figurines on it going eh, 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 jerkily down the side <laughs> and i remember laughing going ha they'll never do that Oops. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, here we By are. By the way, here. John John just wrote in. Um, John Slanita wrote in. I'm sorry. We, we should. We're supposed to use his call sign. Um, how many refuelings to get to Mars? Well, to interesting get to Mars. question. Uh, ten, 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 just to get to the moon. You know. So, but what's the what's the distance comparison? Well, <laughs> but you can only you can only fill it. Right. Yeah. I mean, if you've got one starship headed to Mars, you can only fill it once. So probably about the same number. They just do their um, flight trajectory a little differently. Yeah. yeah. Well, gosh. Oh, and in a final little tagline, Mike Griffin recently came out and said, hey, Artemis is too complex, maybe even dangerous. I don't think it's going to work. And, you know, Mike's Mike Griffin, engineer, Mike Griffin, former, former, former NASA, NASA administrator, administrator so. an engineer, which, which not all administrators are. So I appreciate that. Um, he can be a little, a little sticky at times, but I don't know, you know, the, the part of me that's not rational says, dude, this isn't the time. <laughs> yeah. Well, so Mike Griffin spoke, uh, and actually you mentioned, um, the Congress as well during a hearing scheduled just after the delays, uh, announcements last week scheduled for this week about how to keep Artemis on track. That was the science subcommittee of the house's meeting. That's what it was called. How to keep Artemis on track. And Mike Griffin said, Artemis needs to be restarted, not kept oh, on track, God. you know, oh, um, because of, of kind of where it is. Uh, now and and so there is definitely kind of a lot of a lot of eyes and you see this you know the congressional or not the congressional the um the budget office you know the watchdogs yeah. you know they've been taking a real close eye on kind of all the different components you know you know letting NASA know where uh, the challenges are for SLS uh, why the limiting factor to the landing system isn't just SpaceX but also you know the the suits and 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 whatnot there because you need to have all of that stuff in place uh before the the astronauts can fly and so you know it's it's a bit of a pickle right now with all of these different programs but at some point they're going to have to converge in the next couple of years to make a 2026 uh landing possible i think it's doable you know i think it's doable it's, it seems like there's a, just a lot of a lot of thoughts to to to, to dot and eyes to dot and a lot of t's to cross Hey, if you enjoyed this clip, be sure to check out This Week in Space. You can find us on your favorite podcast app or see the link in the description below. See you there.